<laughs> she just scared the crap out of me. I'll just tell you that. Okay, so let me tell you what we're doing here. Um, Michael Payne, first of all, he is speaking about Solomar Solutions. This is really exciting. It's Advanced Concepts in Energy Medicine um, for Children with Autism, but I know he's got a lot of really cutting-edge things that he's going to be talking about. Um, he is the founder of Living Well Today International and the creator of the Solomar Solution. He is a graduate of Medical College of Virginia with a master's degree in rehabilitation and specializes in neuroimmune dysfunction with advanced studies in homotoxicology, functional medicine, and scalar wave integration. He has created the most advanced method for energetic rehabilitation available for people with complex conditions such as autism, Lyme disease, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and advanced inflammation. He is the author of the Nutrophysical, a um, sensitive biosurvey powered by Zydo, which has assessed over 2,000 people in 15 different countries. He also serves on several scientific boards, including um, Zymogen, Brain Child Nutritionals, and Spectrum Biogenics. He has been a featured speaker with the Leah Foundation. Um, he, it's not his first tur turn at the rodeo with, with us here. Um, doctors' roundtables and various autism society meetings, and has been a guest speaker on several national radio shows. He blends functional medicine, restorative endocrinology, and biotherapeutics. Michael is considered an international innovator in autoimmune and neurological rehabilitation. I got all those big words in there. Yay! All right, I'm going to unmute you, and I'm going to get out of your way, and you can go for it, Michael. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Please recheck the sound. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Tammy says yes. Thank you. Scott says yes. Hey, Scott. Well, thank you all for attending. We are going to be live from Richmond, Virginia on a Saturday night. I think that's really, really cool. Um, bye. So live Saturday night, Richmond, Virginia. There's really not much that goes on here. We're kind of a conservative, sleepy kind of town, and it is cold outside. So um, Scott, unfortunately, a lot of this stuff you've already seen, but a lot of people haven't. I'm so glad that you can hear. Uh, we are going to move forward here in just a second. And um, what I want to tell you all, we've this is our 10th year in helping uh, families that have been um, trying to biomedically recover their children with autism. And we're, ex we're always excited to talk to parents, but we continue to develop our programs. And the natural part of that was the Solomar Solution. That is the aggregation of 10 years of study. And I always tell everybody I have MDs, PharmDs, and MomDs. You tell me who's the smartest. And most of this came out of moms educating me, not me ed educating myself. So I'm very happy to show you what we've been up to for the past two years. So here it comes. The workshop ob objective is really uh, that the Solomar Institute is designed to show how the brain, the spinal cord, the autonomic nervous system, and the extracellular matrix and the endocrine system, along with the blood system, affects uh, how the physical interface with the subtle energy system. Now, the reason I chose this is we kept getting working on people and working on people and we couldn't quite get there and there's this other place that we need to go called the subtle energy system and I'm, I'm not really sure that uh, sequential homeopathy or or um, you know uh, some cases of um, cease therapy those kind of things those are energy medicine but there's also more to it the world needs to know that uh, you know that medicine is more than just cutting you and giving you a pill. Uh, the bottom line is is that with a chemical centric medicine, we really can't help the complex patient. Uh, as a result of having 2,000 people come through here, and uh, maybe many of you don't know who I am, uh, but uh, basically I say everyone has their famous doctor, then they have me to help them get out of the problem sometimes. And so basically what I do here is, is that I try to find the problem and the, and the edge of the sword really often is, is we can't really organize the energy long enough to help the complex patient. 
Well, we have to know that we're more than particles manipulated by medicines, vaccines, and surgery. And I believe, just like the last fellow, which I really enjoy, George, uh, the primacy of energetic medicine, it might be the only answer in the new toxic world. If many of you have been around in this new toxic world, I believe it started about 1992. Uh, it seems like we've had a toxic cabal that just descended upon the whole world between vaccines and, and um, uh, terra farming and uh, um, uh, uh, fluoride in the water. So you start to name it, anything, any of those interrupt the energy systems. Well, we believe that in order for us to move forward, that uh, this nice Eric Topol, MD, wrote a book called The Creative Destruction of Medicine. Medicine isn't evil in itself, it's just that we need to think that, you know, how many mothers have come into me with two reams, two reams, literally, of, um, of uh, tests, functional medicine tests and other tests, and say, here, where do I get started? They're the most informed consumers in the world. We have global communication. I do something called a Zydo. I do consults in Hong Kong in the middle of the night sometimes. We're in constant connectivity. There are new imaging and sensing devices. We've had genomics. A lot of you are already very advanced in your genomic applications. And then we need to integrate it. Because I think the advent of molecular biology, which I'll talk about a little bit about wave genetics and quantum physics and Higgs boson. In this world, energy, matter, and information, kind of come, they are the same thing. So when we do energy medicine, we can talk about energy, matter, or information as a treatment. Well, we kind of started back about 10 years ago. I went to some conference in... Um, I think it was Fort Lauderdale on the brain and it was very interesting and I would listen to a woman named Mary Megson speak and I volunteered to be in her office and I worked there for about three years and I um, sat there and, and watched and, and we were able to apply our biomedical approaches. There, back in those old days, we said disease starts on a plate, and that's what an old doctor said to me, but as we came through these past ten years, all of you know it's much more difficult than that. And, uh, you know, disease of the plate affects the intestine, but it is much, much more difficult because we have a new toxic cabal. Again, started, we, you know, so when you start to look at this, this is an actual picture under a slide that's probably mostly Lyme disease, but it could be fungus, parasites, strep, staph, clostridia, viruses, even stealth viruses, which we talk about, prions, EMFs, and radiation with the advent of Fukushima really being much bigger problem than anyone seems to willing to admit. Our water, the fluoride, the toxic farming practices, the medicinal side effects, the transportation of food from long distances, iPhone, cordless phones, and fracking in Fukushima, all of those are what I call the toxic cabal. I don't even know if we need to know much more, but it is very toxic. My friend Dana basically says, so Mike, what you're telling me is, is we're a five-story roach motel. Hmm. Yeah, pretty much, Dana. And the frat boys are in charge of the second floor. But here's our client. We can, we can go on through, but our primary client, I'd like for you to know that this is the face of what we've been doing here for the past two years. The Solomar Solution, nice little fellow in Hawaii, nice little fellow in Ireland, a really, um, a really um, fashion challenged young man here in Richmond. Some folks in Tunisia had about 12 kids before the Arab Spring in Tunisia. I call this shoe overgrowth in Texas at age 13. She was six foot one. No one decided she ever had an endocrine issue, even though her parents were not quite six foot one. It took them a whole year to figure out that after energy medicine discovered that she had a thyroid issue and Lyme disease, it took a whole year to show up in the blood. Have some folks out in uh, Nicaragua, some folks somewhere in the Pacific. This one's really quite interesting. This is a Brazilian missionary that had Lyme disease. In Brazil, we can actually, it's easier to get Alenia than it is to get vitamin C. So we've helped a lot of people this way uh, by getting what is called a Zyto hand cradle to them and testing them over the internet. And this woman lives 15 miles, uh, 15 hour drive away from any, any place. So she drives to an internet cafe, but now she has it in her house. This was what kind of started it all. This young man, this is usually a film that we've shown before, but after a vaccine, 
a neurotypical kid with a mother who had Lyme disease after a vaccine at age nine started showing symptoms and couldn't quite walk and he was in great amount of pain. He's still a patient here. It's been a great trip for the past three years of trying to get him through it. Uh, this is him as he gets a little older and there's his testimony and the testimony was about what we do here. One of the major things, the key piece of our treatment is we run one of the best Zytos in the world. You can see that. You can go to Zyto.com and, and look at the uh, conference registration and we're in the top 10 folks who run Zytos. So we're, we're teaching other doctors how to use a Zyto in, in, in a very congruent way. But this fellow we spotted that he had strep in the brain and it was very bad and it was very, something that allowed him to um, you know, allow a starting point because we knew where the tip of the spear was. So those are kind of people that we serve. In the past several years, however, we have decided that, you know, it's a bigger deal than just autism. And we have felt that along the way that people with MS, Parkinson's, Lyme, and cancer can have similar uh, issues. Well, we decided that energy medicine was really, really important. And we took it to the next level by using and advancing the use of frequency devices. So I call this one channeling Einstein, because if you don't channel Einstein or Tesla, you're probably not going to get what this is. And to be quite honest with you, for a guy who used to just give cod liver oil um, and probiotics, this was quite a leap. And so channeling Einstein, this is kind of like that Clint Eastwood thing. Here's my empty chair. I'm sitting here talking to Mr. Einstein. And Mr. Einstein tells me, I don't really want to go down this path maybe because, see, I kind of look like that now. This is what I have to look forward to possibly. That's kind of bothering me. So the more I get deeper and deeper into energy medicine, there's, that's going to be my new profile here. Hopefully none of you will be sitting here in five or six years. So... Channeling Einstein, the warning is you'll get a bad hair day if you do this. But, you know, this work has been done for 40 years. It's called biophotonic modulation. I came to the conclusion that I'll tell you about later that vaccines cause brain damage in the brainstem, which is not anything new. Most of you know that. But we've been uh, basically mapping the brain through the Zydo and we've come up with some very interesting ideas about the medulla, the cerebellum, the pons and that inflammation and that hey has anybody ever heard of something called a blood-brain barrier? I'm not sure we really have one after we've had inflammation for so long and when you've been under a lot of stress your brain rewires. Well there may be only a few ways to retrieve that function and I believe one of them is biophotonic and light energy. The, this is not a far stretch. Uh, Dr. Fritz Popp uh, has been doing this for 40 years at this point. In America, Dr. Steve Holtwanger has consulted with me because he was one of the last students of a fellow named Hans Nieper. And he writes about the bioenergetic, uh, bioenergy and electronic nutrition or cell mem membrane health. But if you'll look into Hans Nieper, some of those have been very, very good for our um, our clients, uh, some of those type of mineral ideas that they had. So we believe there's a remarkable new reality or a new view of reality that, that really we should be concentrating and what we're trying to create here is a psychoneurological approach to complex patient because I don't believe in the new toxic world we're ever going to be able to conquer the new toxic world with biochemical interventions.